There we go. Now if you notice over here, my CPU usage meter, this is a dual core processor, but it has two threads per core. So it actually shows up as a quad core processor. Now obviously you have your traditional desktop over here with full applications. Over here you have apps, and that's pretty much how an iPad is run. You look at your selection of apps and then go into it. Now if this was an Android tablet, it would be a little bit different. It would look a little bit more like a desktop. If it was a WebOS tablet, it would look even different from there because you have your card system and whatnot. But one thing that's pretty much universal with tablets is that you use an app and then you get out of an app and get into a new app. So for instance, if I wanted to go into YouTube, I'd click into that brings me into YouTube. If I want to go into something else, I'd have to go back to the home and then go into Engadget over here. So it's in and out, in and out. It's a little bit different on a WebOS device because multitasking is the best on a WebOS device. So you can actually switch between apps and have the apps running. But since iPads are the most popular tablets right now, I'm using an iPad as an example and not a WebOS tablet, which has a very small install base. On a netbook, it's just like a regular computer. You can multitask, you can have a lot of things open at the same time, and you can switch between them without having to close out and then open up. So your multitasking is definitely superior on a netbook than it is on a tablet. You're going to get full-fledged apps. You have the full internet. You don't have to worry about Apple not supporting Flash or Flash not being the best on an Android tablet. On WebOS devices and the HP touchpad, you're going to get better Flash integration on those devices. But on tablets, Flash is hit or miss. Either you don't have it or it's not that great or you might get a good experience out of it depending on what device you use. On a netbook, you're guaranteed to have Flash, so you pretty much have the entire internet. You don't have 80% of the internet, you have 100% of the internet on a netbook. And you have full-fledged apps. On this device, I have this Kodak Home Center, which is my app to communicate with my Kodak printer. So I can do scanning, I can do the full suite of functions printing something out using that app on a netbook. Whereas on a tablet, if you're lucky, you might be able to print something off of it. So the functionality of a netbook is much greater than that of a tablet. But one size doesn't fit all, and that's really the reason I'm doing this video, is just to highlight the differences between these two devices. You might be perfectly satisfied with a tablet and want to use a tablet, or you might be perfectly satisfied with a netbook and want to use a netbook. It's just whatever your particular needs are. Now this netbook keyboard over here, is not a full-size keyboard. This is a 10.1 inch netbook, so the keyboard is a little bit smaller than what you're gonna get on a laptop or just a regular size keyboard. But this keyboard is still bigger than anything you're gonna get on a tablet. Let's go into Safari here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's bring up the keyboard. Now, you see a keyboard here and you see the keyboard here. Obviously, much larger over here. And also, you actually have physical buttons over here, so you can blindly type. I'm a type of person, I type about 60 words a minute, I don't look at the keys, I just type away. And it's good to have physical keys, that way you know what you're typing. Even though the shift key over here on this device is very small, and a lot of the times I'll end up hitting the up arrow key, which is not ideal, but at least I can blind type on this where I cannot on this. Now obviously this is in portrait mode, let's put it in landscape. Even in landscape mode, the keyboard is smaller over here. The keys actually might be larger than they are on this netbook, but the keyboard in itself is smaller and you don't have a row of number keys. You have your row of number keys here where you don't have to switch to an alternate keyboard, which you do have to do on a tablet. Now obviously you have any browser you want you can install on a netbook from Safari, to Chrome, to Firefox, to Internet Explorer, to Opera, whatever you want. On a tablet, you're only going to find mobile browsers. In this case, I have Safari, and I just updated this device to iOS 5, and you can actually have tabbed browsing on the device. So you have different tabs here that you can manipulate, 
and uh, that's a nice addition to iOS. But basically you're using a browser that does not support Flash and uh, it's a mobile browser. On a netbook you're getting a full-fledged browser. Now as far as apps go, Windows probably has the most amount of applications that you can download and use on the device. So that's really the only place where the Apple App Store pales in comparison because the Apple App Store pretty much as far as tablets goes has the most amount of apps in it. But when you compare the Apple App Store to the Windows ecosystem, you're going to get more apps available or applications or programs available on a Windows device. Where a tablet really shines is the obvious. It's in touch interface because the touch interface allows you to do things that you cannot do on a netbook. Obviously, for instance, how intimate I am with the device here by touching it and pointing exactly. I don't have to use a mouse. I don't have to have a degree of separation between me and the program. I can actually pretty much just touch and go wherever I want to go. And something like this vid rhythm. I guess you could do it on a netbook if you wanted to but you're only going to find these kind of unique apps. And by the way, I have a whole video on VidRhythm if you're interested in, to see what it is. It's, a, it's an interesting little uh, app that allows you to make some really strange and bizarre music. But anyway, something like VidRhythm is only available on iOS devices and you can't find it on Windows devices. And it's pretty much something that has been born of the touch interface on tablets even though you don't necessarily need touch on the device. You could, if you wanted to, use it on a traditional desktop or laptop, or in this case, netbook. Now, the only thing new about a netbook, which really isn't that new, is the form factor. It's a smaller laptop. So that's pretty much the sizzle to a netbook. It's a compact laptop. Whereas the sizzle, the wow factor of a tablet, is the touch. So there is a wow factor to a tablet. It's a new way to do your computing. And it's a newer form factor because it's actually like having a magazine or a piece of paper holding it versus a clamshell device as a laptop or in this case the netbook. Now just one interesting note. On the Apple iPad 2 you can actually change the background wallpaper. On this netbook running Windows 7 Starter you cannot change the background, which is kind of ridiculous of Microsoft to pull that feature from Windows 7 Starter. That's something that you could do on the lowest end of feature phones that you cannot do on Windows 7 Starter. That should change, but I thought it was interesting to mention it. Now the last thing I'm going to cover before I go to the conclusion on this is the price. In this case here, this is the lowest end Apple iPad 2 that you can get. It's a 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi only version and it costs $499. This netbook over here, I purchased off of eBay, so I got it second hand and it cost me $200. I think brand new, it cost either $249 or $299. You can get some netbooks that will cost you around $449, but even the highest end netbook cost less than the lowest end Apple iPad. The one difference here is if you get into a Kindle Fire or a Nook. A Nook right now will cost you $249. A Kindle Fire will cost you $299. So if you get one of those devices, you're going to get more in the ballpark of what you would spend on a netbook. But again, at the time of filming this video, the most popular tablet on the market today is an Apple iPad 2 and you will be paying extra for that. So I hope I've given you a lot of information that you can decide for yourself what is best for your case. But to sum it up, a tablet is a very slick device. It's a very cool device. It gives you the option of doing your computing in a very new and different way. They're lightweight devices. They have a lightweight operating system on them. And they're a little bit more limited than a traditional or full-fledged, full-blown computer. A netbook is a shrunken down version of a laptop. Not only is the screen resolution smaller, your keyboard is smaller, and the performance that you're going to get out of an Atom processor is not quite the performance that you're going to get out of, let's say, a Core i3, a Core i5, a Core i7, 
or an equivalent AMD processor. But you're still going to get a beefier device going with a netbook versus a tablet. And you're going to get all the apps that go along with it. So if you choose an operating system like Windows, you're going to be able to run all of the apps that you're going to be able to run on a regular Windows desktop. Unless you're looking at processor intensive video editing software or games. You're definitely going to get more bang for your buck on a netbook. It's just not as cool as a tablet. You're definitely going to get more functionality out of a netbook. You're going to be able to type things faster. You're going to have access to more word processing programs. You have access to the full internet. A netbook is just more useful in getting things done. A tablet is more of a play device. Sure, you can get things done on it, but chances are that's not why you bought the tablet. And if you're really serious about getting things done, you need a more expansive operating system that allows you to do more. So if I have to crystallize it, I would say a tablet is mostly a fun device and allows you to get some stuff done, whereas a netbook allows you to do everything that you could do on your laptop or your desktop just in a smaller form factor with a less powerful CPU. So that pretty much does it for this video. What do you think? Do you prefer tablets? Do you prefer netbooks? If you have any of these devices, what is your experience with them? Please post that down in the comments down below. So that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.